Hello, and thank you for joining us on this early morning from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm NASA's Jasmine Hopkins, and we are counting down to launch PACE. That's the Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem. And joining us today to talk about this mission is Laura Lorenzoni, uh, NASA's program scientist for the Ocean Biology and Biogeochemistry program. That is a mouthful. Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much, Jasmine. It is such an honor to be here with all of you, near and far, and witness history in the making. And third time is the charm. Yes, third time is the charm. That's right, Laura. This is the third launch attempt for PACE after the first two attempts were postponed due to weather conditions earlier this week. But weather is looking much better today. We are about 95% go, and we are back and ready to try again. Uh, launch is set for 1.33 and 36 seconds Eastern time. So how does it feel to finally be here for launch, Laura? So it feels un unbelievable. We've been waiting anxiously all week for, for PACE to launch, um, and it is really, uh, it's going to be an amazing launch. Night launches are just incredible, um, but this one is going to be just unbelievable because it's space and uh, it's going to be great on TV, but feeling the excitement here and just living this together is just amazing. Right, and we'll get to feel the rumble uh, on the ground, all that good stuff. But Laura, you've been waiting for this for a long time. You've been working the mission three years and some people have been working it for decades, right? That is correct. So PACE has been around uh, for about a couple of decades. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition. Full power engines and liftoff of the Falcon 9 and PACE. Helping keep pace with our ever-changing ocean and atmosphere. Stage one propulsion is nominal. All nine Merlin engines lit up and roaring. 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Power and telemetry nominal. Makes its steep climb into its orbit. Ride right about two minutes on the first stage. A view from the rocket camera. Vehicle supersonic. Here we hear Falcon 9 supersonic coming up on maximum max Q. Maximum dynamic pressure on the launch vehicle. Max Q. Pass through max Q. The vehicle continues to perform nominally. All nine engines. Firing. Main engine cut off, and then we'll have stage one, two, SEP, and then stage two, ignition. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And there it goes, the first stage of the rocket. Second stage now lighting back up. Ignition. Stage one, boost back startup. You see the glow of the first stage as it falls away. I'm excited to see that first stage come back here to landing zone one uh, this morning. That uh, will be great as stage two continues, continues to perform. Getting that stage back here will be exciting. If you're here on the Space Coast and you're watching, get ready for a double thunder clap at just about T plus seven minutes. Seven to eight minutes. The double sonic booms of the first stage booster breaking the sound barrier as it returns to Earth. Stage one boost back shutdown. So now the first stage has positioned itself on a return trajectory back here to landing zone one, which is only a mile or so from our location at Hangar AE. We get quite the thunderclap. <laughs> yeah, always love to hear the landing zone back here when we're in the hangar. We're about uh, 10 seconds away from uh, jettison fairing of the payload fairing, uh, exposing pace to the atmosphere. This is a big moment for the spacecraft team. Fairing separation confirmed. Looking inside, there go the fairings, revealing the Pace spacecraft to the elements. 
Now Pace will seek to get a signal on the Tidris satellite for our first acquisition of signal. Yeah, this will be a uh, downlink of a, a low-level uh, signal on the Tidris network, uh, utilizing the uh, telemetry network to, to verify that Pace is uh, the transmitter is on, and then they will continue monitoring the spacecraft uh, until separation, uh, and then be able to get their uh, data once they get power positive that we'll see later. And in that moment you just described, that time period that you just described, they'll only be monitoring data coming from the PACE satellite. They will not be sending any commands in. Absolutely. Nothing until the spacecraft separates uh, from from uh, the stage two. Uh, the space so far on second stage is performing very well. Looks good on our trajectory. They just made a call. Somebody called ASO, but nobody's answered. And there's a shot from the first stage booster as we're coming back down to the Cape. You can see the lights of the Space Coast. It's a pretty shot. I love that shot, Come seeing the coast of Florida come back into uh, view. Two more burns left. Stage one entry burn startup. That's the first one, the entry burn, for about 30 seconds. You see it lighting up now. Grid fins are out to help give it a precision landing, guiding the first stage booster back to landing zone one. Split screen now. Well, we did have it. There's stage a shot. Two FTS is saved. There's a shot of the booster coming back down from the ground. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage one, FTS is saved. All right, and in comes. You can probably see us in there somewhere. <laughs> I, lo I love that view at night too. To see the, it'll be, it'll be really nice to see that as it gets closer, uh, the coast of Florida as we come up on landing zone one. Uh, stage two continues to perform anomaly on a great. Transonic. Great uh, trajectory for stage two as spacecraft uh, continues to uh, look very well during this flight. Stage one landing burn. All right, there goes the landing burn. In just a few seconds, we'll have a booster on the ground. Laps. Landing leg deploy. Here she comes. Stage one landing confirmed. Another pinpoint landing by the first stage booster. Flight number four for the first stage in the books. Second stage continuing to burn on a seven and a half minute direct inject into orbit. This will be a quick ride, Mick. Very quick uh, as the continues to uh, perform very well. Uh, we're looking for this uh, to continue firing, and we'll get uh, second stage cut off at around T plus 10 minutes, but things look very well on the telemetry. Vehicle's performing very well, and MVAC is uh, nominal. The second stage on a Cape Polar trajectory hasn't been done by NASA in the past 60 years. SpaceX, though, has done it 11 times. This would be the 12th. Just about three minutes left. Actually, check that. Just about a minute left on the stage two burn. There will only be one stage two burn. Yeah, as Jimmy explained to us in the trajectory, this is a direct inject uh, sun synchronous uh, orbit. So just a single burn for the stage two uh, this morning. And uh, things continue to look well. Uh, chamber pressure on MVAC and trajectory look nominal. And then we'll coast for just a few minutes. 
and separate the PACE Observatory. Standing by for stage two cutoff, known as SECO-1. We'll have that in just a few seconds. Shut down. All right, there you have it. Now we're going to coast for a few minutes and take a look at the forward facing camera so we can see the PACE spacecraft, which is being monitored by the spacecraft. Engine nozzle on stage two still glowing just a bit. The all telemetry on stage two looks uh, nominal for the flight. Looks uh, like a very good uh, uh, stage two performance so far. So we'll see how things go uh, as we get ready for spacecraft separation. Now just about one minute away. There goes pace. Payload separation confirmed. Off into space on its own, flying free. We've got applause here at the Mission Director's Center at Hangar AE. Looks like a good separation. Vehicle, pretty stable. Yeah, launch vehicle performed very well today, and uh, glad to see pace separated. Uh, we've got a few more milestones that the team will be uh, working on to get uh, pace to power positive. Hopefully we can have this view for a bit longer. You see stacked to the right side of the screen, the three lines. Those are the solar arrays. It's a three-panel array. And once the guidance and nav navigation control system senses that it's got uh, basically nulled the rates, the spacecraft is stable, it'll start to deploy those solar arrays. And it will be done autonomously.